the AI in Empire Earth 2 is designed to be the pinnacle of all AI in real-time strategy games. It doesn't cheat. It plays the game fair and square against you. It harvests its resources, it has to explore the map, it has to figure out where you are, it builds walls and roads, it sets up its own defenses. When it's going after you, it will take out your defenses in an intelligent way. The AI in Empire Earth 2 is really designed to be one of the strongest features of the game and it will enable you to have infinite replayability in skirmish games and it will give you good allies that you can play with in multiplayer games. One of the cornerstone features of Empire Earth 2 is the territories. Every map is divided up into territories at the start of the game and these territories look like the natural states or nations that you'd find in the world. They follow the lines of rivers, mountains, they have borders between them that you can see on the main map and on the mini map and on the full screen map. It's a key feature to playing Empire Earth 2 because in order to expand your empire, in order to have a certain number of citizens, you need to build city centers and houses. But you're only allowed one city center per territory and only up to eight houses per territory. So you can't sit back in your corner and just build up a huge army waiting for the end epic of the game and charge out. You actually need to step out and take territory in order to win Empire Earth 2 multiplayer games or skirmish games or single player games. It's a feature that has really made the battles more dynamic, they have a bigger ebb and flow. If I'm playing against somebody and I see that he has five territories and I only have four territories, I know that I can take one of his and that will swing the pendulum in my direction. The territories are a foundation upon which everything else is built from the diplomacy system to a lot of the powers that you get for winning crowns and it's become really the hallmark of Empire Earth 2. Most RTS games have had diplomacy that consisted simply of I'm allied with you or I'm not allied with you. In Empire Earth 2 we wanted to capture more of the feel of diplomacy that you'd find in board games or diplomacy in the real world. I can be allied with you in a number of different ways. We can have the traditional RTS alliance where we're straight up allies, share line of sight, and that's that. But we can also do other things. We can set it up so that our line of sight isn't shared. We can share a line of sight only from our buildings or only from our units. I can also forbid you from coming into my territories if we're allied. I could let it be so that only your citizens and your civilian units can come into my territory. I can make it so only your military units could come into my territory. I can also give you resource rights. If your territory doesn't have much gold, I can say, well, you can harvest gold from my territory, but I get 10% of that gold back to me. We've put more options into the diplomacy for Empire Earth 2 because we've put more strategy into Empire Earth 2. When you're playing multiplayer in Soul Survivor mode and only one player can win, you can set up alliances that only last for 5 minutes or 10 minutes or however long you want. The diplomacy in Empire Earth 2 reflects the sort of back behind the scenes deals that you'll make with your friends through chat or over a phone while you're playing the game, but it makes it part of the game and it really makes the multiplayer a much more exhilarating experience. In Empire Earth 2, we have seasons and weather. The weather is specific to the different terrain sets we have. There are, there's an arid terrain set, a tropical terrain set, and a temperate terrain set. And each of them has its own set of seasons and its own type of severe weather. In the tropical terrain set, for example, you have typhoons that come up. And in the typhoon, fixed wing aircraft have to land. Helicopters are able to fly, but they can be damaged or even struck by lightning. In the temperate tile set, you'll have blizzards, and when there's so snow on the ground, units will move slower, some units may not be able to move at all. And in the arid tile set, you have dust storms, which reduce visibility, slow down movement of certain types of units. Basically, it adds a dynamic strategy element into the game. So over the course of a mission, if you have the weather enabled, you'll have to base your strategy for attacks and defense on what's going on with the weather. You can take advantage of a dust storm to attack. You can take advantage of a tropical storm to attack somebody who has aircraft that will be grounded. Weather is a very important part of Empire Earth 2 for both realism and strategy. Rated T for Teen.